So, thank you everyone for joining. Uh, this is going to be a women in tech panel, but it actually has to do more about diversity and inclusion overall. So we know a lot of times we talk about women in tech, but it, uh, there are so many other um, genders and it's not just binary. So it has to do about everything. And we're just gonna have like four amazing women here. Uh, <laughs> so uh, I'll have you introduce yourselves, please. Yeah, my name is Anna. Um, I live in London since September. I actually just moved to Notting Hill. Really exciting. Um, I work for a company called Elastic, um, and I do a lot of community work. In my free time, I sit on the Python Software Foundation Board of Directors, um, and I'm a co-leader of Pi Ladies London. Uh, I'm Christine. Um, I live in London as well. I've been here for 16 years. Um, I'm also very local. I work um, at Bloomberg. Um, and I've worked at Bloomberg for 18 years, um, which is very long. <laughs> um, and I've done a whole lot of roles over my career. Um, I, I've done uh, software engineering roles. I've done team leader roles. Um, I used to look after um, all of our engineering teams here in London up until about two months ago. Um, and then I started to do a technical product owner role. Uh, hi, I'm Carolina. I've been uh, working for seven years in Switzerland uh, for startups and medium-sized companies uh, in roles such as uh, full stack and data engineer. And then I moved to London and now I work as an independent consultant for the same type of companies. And in my free time, I enjoy painting. I'm actually, I'm running a workshop that combines uh, the concepts about programming and art. Well, yeah. I want the details of that later. <laughs> <laughs> Hi, uh, my name is Leona Morinigo. I basically also recently moved to London after being having two years of digital nomad life. So yes, and I'm really happy about it. And uh, uh, currently I'm a Google developer expert. I run DDG Cloud community here in London. So, and also I'm doing IT consulting for different startups too. Nice. Okay, so I forgot to introduce myself, it seems. Uh, hi, I'm Mariana. I work in Bloomberg as well. I've been working here for about five years. I'm currently leading a team uh, in London, and uh, I'm also a member of the Python Guild in Bloomberg, which is pretty cool. Uh, so, by the way, I'm not just looking at Instagram. I have the questions here. <laughs> <laughs> so, uh, let's start with uh, saying a bit more about what you're doing and so on. So tell me about something cool you're doing right now. <laughs> Except of being on this panel, okay, I'll, I'll let you off. <laughs> I have an idea yes. to talk about. Uh, so one somewhat recent interest of mine is about improving the hiring process. So I've been working with, uh, with a company to design new coding questions. And uh, I'm also uh, working with another company to improve the, their interviewing process, to, to make it not test not just for algorith algorithmic skills, but also other skills that are very useful for a programmer to have. So communication skills. Communication skills, for example, and also being able to take an existing code base and work with it without uh, burning it to the ground and starting from scratch. <laughs> Because Absolutely. legacy is f a fact of life that we oh, need yeah. to get used to. Fair enough. Okay. Um, how about something you've worked on that's very that you felt was impactful? Uh, I actually have a story to tell. So I, um, Pi Ladies Ghana reached out to me. There is the first PyCon Africa happening in August. I don't know the exact dates, but you all should go because it's awesome. It's organized by a woman called Marlene Mangami. I don't know right now. <laughs> Look it up online. Um, and Pi Ladies Ghana reached out to me and they asked if I could tell their members a little bit about how to write a proposal, how to prepare for a conference talk. And someone tweeted at me yesterday and she watched my workshop and she got her first conference talk accepted. And that's really awesome. So, yeah. <laughs> That's really good, and that was definitely impactful. When you get the feedback, it's what makes it Yes, cool, right? yes. <laughs> uh, I can share a little bit about um, something that I'm doing now. So I, I started to do um, a very different role a couple months ago, um, and it's been hugely exciting, and I, have, I haven't felt this completely stupid in a long time. <laughs> and for me, that's been a lot of fun and very challenging. Um, and it's been kind of learning lots of different technologies, and it's been 
It's been great. But what we're trying to do, the crux of what we're trying to do is help to make the engineers at you know, Bloomberg at our company um, a lot more kind of effective by not looking in tons of places to find official documentation and correct information about kind of what tools they should be using and you know, what the latest status of different APIs are. So that's something that, the impact of that is something that I've felt many times over the years as, my, like as, as an engineer as well as a, a, a leader of teams. It's like, well, where do I find this information? It's like, you just need to ask that person. <laughs> like, yeah, you can, you, could, you can look and you definitely should do that, but once you've done all that research, you just need to go talk to them. So being able to improve that process for kind of our population, I think is something that I'm very excited about because it's very real, <laughs> something I'm experiencing now. Um, and yeah, it's definitely, uh, it's challenging me. I can tell you it's going to have an impact on me for sure. <laughs> <laughs> Great. Well, I'm working right now with a really excited uh, startup that is called Train Effective. Basically, it's a football online academy. So for me, it's really exciting. I really like football. I'm from Argentina, by the way. That's why. <laughs> <laughs> and, uh, and actually, the founder is just 23 years old. And it's a really young team. And they are about to scale about like million users. So I'm leading the developer team and help them to scale. And besides football and uh, the part of that is related with technology, they have this um, academy to also focus into mental health into the kids that actually they want to start uh, playing football and uh, help them to grow as a person. So that for me is really exciting. Okay, it sounds like you're all doing very cool stuff actually and it's very interesting when I asked what cool are you working on, it was like silence. <laughs> <laughs> but uh, how do you keep yourself motivated and working through everything and keep doing incredible things? It's a hard one I think. I think everybody like, it just happens to everybody that people don't feel it sometimes. For me, it's really been um, connecting with people and sharing my problems. And maybe that's kind of I'm spreading the misery a little bit. <laughs> <laughs> but um, for me, it's really trying to find people that I think care about things that I care about, and maybe share kind of some sort of values that we have in common. Um, and then just kind of trying to work together to, to really you know, figure out if I'm stuck on something or if I'm feeling really not you know, kind of inspired by what I'm doing. Is, is you know really working with others that kind of care about it. And, and the other thing that I think is you know also important is just to know when you yourself have hit your wall and you know whatever that wall may be, whether it's kind of you know needing a change of scenery, change of role, change of people, change of technology, um, you know realizing what it is that kind of does drive you and putting things in place and being proactive about getting you inspired again. No one's going to inspire you. you have to figure out for me what like that's how I've um, gone about it. Yeah, kind of what ticks and yes. So I recently kind of hit a point of meetup organizing and fellow meetup organizers might agree with me. Um, so there's the common problem that you always have about a 50% no-show rate for meetups. And it's sometimes very disheartening if you've put like a lot of hard work into organizing a meetup, you organize the venue, you organize the speakers and only 10 people show up. So that's sometimes disheartening. But then I remind myself, maybe I have some standards that are too high. If I just reach one person and I make a difference in their day, then I've done something good. Um, also, as Christine said, it's important to take breaks. Um, especially, well, all of us, we do a lot of volunteer work uh, in the Python community. And I think it's important to go on a real vacation. Don't do any volunteer work on vacation. Just set that out of office reminder. Uh, one of my former co-volunteers once said to me, there are no emergencies in open source software. We're, mm -hmm. we're not doctors, uh, so if you go on vacation for two weeks, it will still be fine. People might miss you, but that's good. Um, but yeah, take breaks. Yeah, I, I agree. In fact, um, well, I've been traveling on my own the last two years. One of the reasons that I've been doing that is to meet other communities. And there are moments in, in my career that I didn't know what it was the next step. So basically, the first step that I need to do is give some space to check which kind of the things I like, which kind of the things I don't want to, right? And with that space, basically, go into the next step. So, uh -huh. uh, For me, what helps is that I work in a flexible way. So I can basically, to, to a certain extent, 
choose my hours and that means that when I feel some burnout or whatever coming, I can choose to, to go out in nature instead of working one day. And this has helped me a lot, like compared to, um, to how it was when I was uh, working full time. Also, I think saying no is important and it's something that a lot of us are bad at. Um, I have this rule, like if I don't feel 100% yes, this excites me, then I say no. And this is sometimes really hard, but you don't have to say no in a rude way. You can say, no, not me, but I have these other 10 friends who might be able to help you um, with what you're looking for. So don't be afraid to say no. It's oftentimes better than loading more and more and more onto your plate. Um, and also, I think um, what some communities struggle with is it's always the same set of people organizing all the things but then there's the other 50% of people who say hey I want to get involved but I don't know how so let's give those people a chance to get involved as well yeah and I think it's a really like important kind of signal to yourself that like if you find most of the time you're not enjoying kind of what you're doing that <laughs> something probably isn't right and I like your sort of am I really excited about this like does it spark joy was that the KonMari <laughs> method does it spark joy <laughs> no <laughs> For those who are tidy ears, you'll know what I'm talking about. Yeah. <laughs> so um, you mentioned actually helping someone as well. Um, how about mentorship, either being a mentor or um, being a mentor to someone else? Uh, sorry, being a mentor being or being a mentee. <laughs> <laughs> OK. Well, currently, I'm mentoring online. Uh, I used to teach coding in uh, my city. But then when I started to travel, it's kind of hard, right? You don't have the classroom. So I get the chance to keep mentoring and doing classes online. And besides teaching, it's all about also you learn from each other, right? Um, it's, not, it's, not, it's also a different role that you can have, your experience or even the different ideas that somebody can have about career. And you already been in that path can help a lot to somebody as somebody helped me in a different way. Also, so for me, mentoring is part of my career for sure. As I mentioned, I offer um, speaker mentorship. I currently don't do it as much as I used to, but that's really important and something that sparks a lot of joy in me. Uh, for being a mentee, um, I think some people think that you have like that one person that you turn to for everything. For me, it's not like that. Like I have mentors for different things. Like my friend Lorena, I would consider her, like she has taught me a lot about self-worth, for example. So she's a mentor to me in that field. My friend Jeff, he teaches me a lot about personal finance. So um, I think just like build relationships with different people. Um, you don't have to have one person for everything. Yeah, I agree. And one thing that uh, helped me a lot, because I, I have a kind of similar way to you, I have a financial coach, <laughs> like relationship coach, whatever, <laughs> food coach, and he's actually be able to share in which part of your life are you, and also which kind of uh, things you want to improve. Um, financial, okay. I'm struggling with these. I, I would like to know which other person has a similar way. And then you can help each other. Mm -hmm. Yeah, that's, it's, I think, very similar to what I've experienced. I've just tried to, I, I've been fortunate to get to know and work with lots of very, um, very skilled and uh, experienced people over the years and just kind of really connecting with different people and sharing my problems and hearing their problems and hopefully we've been able to co-mentor each other um, over the years is really how I've kind of tried to set up kind of my own kind of mentorship experiences whether I was the mentor or whether I was the mentee. Martha, my friend Martha and I, we just talked about how do people build friendships. And I think what it comes down to and what also is true for mentorship is that it takes a lot of vulnerability. You have to admit that, hey, all my relationships sucks or hey, I'm bad at spending my money. Um, and then the mentor also has to open up a little bit for you to build up a relationship. But um, one quote that I really like that I've heard, um, I don't know where I picked it up, but is that people don't associate with, don't relate to perfect, they relate to vulnerable. And so I think vulnerability is really something that unites us. It's really hard, but I think it's, it's always been worth it when I was vulnerable with people. Yeah, it sounds like Benet Brown. 
I don't know. Probably. I just uh, read yeah. a book by her, yeah. <laughs> I saw the Netflix. Yeah, yeah. Wait, Watch it, really cool. Familiar with this. Renee Brown. Renee yeah. Brown. She's a, a storyteller. She's, she has been studying vulnerability yeah. and uh, all this There's this a stuff. TED Talk by her. Yeah. It's really good. Mm -hmm. yeah. Okay. yeah. You can look it yeah, up later. <laughs> How do you think the mentorship kind of relationship uh, happened? Was it something that was organic or was it just for you? I've had the best results when it's organic. Mm -hmm. Like when there is a, there's just a match in the in that the mentor has time and the knowledge that you seek and you um, you also have the um, the time and dedication to actually show that you're committed and uh, deserving of like the attention of this person. Uh, there are also some platforms where uh, you can try to get matched up with mentors. Uh, usually those are not uh, they're not free. Um, this can also work out for uh, for like uh, very specific things I think. One such platform, for example, is codementor.io, where people mm -hmm. can get help on specific problems. Mm -hmm. Fair enough. Yeah. Okay, thank you. Um, so, we talked about mentorship. Let's talk a bit about leadership and uh, in tech. Uh, in terms of um, being in a minority group, and I know, Christine, you've been a leader for a while. So, uh, do you think this ever was uh, has affected well, it's interesting. I think I think I might put that question back to you, actually. <laughs> <laughs> I, I can share it. Uh, like I, I can definitely share my experience, and I guess that um, I think technology is great because um, when there's disagreements, in many cases, you can kind of really you know look at data and kind of look at what works. And yes, we can still disagree about how we're going about things. And yes, there are like myriad opportunities to still have conflict and and to still have kind of you know issues with leadership and you know creating an environment where people are thriving and where products are able to be built which are really amazing but i guess from from my experience i i, I guess i've seen my leadership challenges really not through a gender lens but through, through <laughs> my own particular challenges um with 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 how my personality is i think and kind of how my what my background is and what my skill set is and of course there's an aspect of gender to that but it, it never felt for me i think a lot, I'm sure, has to do with what company environment you're in. Mm -hmm. And I think for, for our company environment, at least, it's something that I think we spend a lot of time trying to create very inclusive spaces um, and have people really be heard. Um, so I think for, for our environment, the gender thing was never a, mm -hmm. like a big part of you know, being a leader for me. If anything, I think like it probably, you know, I was oh she's it's the girl, <laughs> like is it, and and it, but it, but in a positive way yeah, yeah. as opposed to a negative way. How about how about yourself? Oh, I actually <laughs> I'm prepared for that. I'm not in the <laughs> panel, <laughs> <dumbest>. <laughs> So uh, no, I actually haven't had an issue with this in Bloomberg. Uh, to be fair, uh, not in a leadership perspective for sure. It has to do a lot, I think, with your personality, and it does have to do a lot with the kind of the team environment that you yourself. Um, inspired to others in others as well so you can have a team that's very inclusive and that doesn't have to do with gender or like anything very specific it has to do more with even personalities you have people who are very extroverted and you have people who are very introverted and having those two personalities in the same team can also uh, it can be an issue but also it can just not be one and it just has to do a lot with an inclusive environment. And I mm. think this is the most important part. Mm. Uh, and it's interesting, because we, we obviously exist in our corporate bubble to a yeah. certain extent. And I guess you ladies, like, are, like, there's community groups that you're leading. And like, that must it's very different, because you don't have this you know, kind of like, other kind of creature that's kind of creating this environment and trying to enforce this environment. So I guess, like, how, how has that been for you guys? Um. It's, it's all about giving the space, right? And also uh, check which other person can support you besides that. Because uh, one of my first roles as a leader was actually in a really small startup uh, leadership. And uh, there were uh, three other um, super nice guys. And actually at the beginning, it was even hard for me because the idea to lead, it was, uh, I don't know, I was feeling even weird giving instructions, but it's not about that, right? And um, other member that was there 
was like, okay, right now you are given the space for you to actually um, guide the team, get involved with other team members, right? And I felt more comfortable because also I think it's uh, in terms of personality, in terms of who you are, in terms of sometimes, oh, I can be a leader. Sometimes that's other thing, right, that happened. So uh, I think it's about communication and giving the space also to others. Mm -hmm. uh, for me, I have to say I've been uh, mostly on the individual contributor, aka lone wolf path. I think if it's okay for guys to do it, it's okay for me as well. I think it's also a lot about encouragement. Like I'm um, kind of in this place where I'm deciding, do I want to go the individual contributor path or do I want to be a manager? Um, I do really enjoy helping people, but I'm also terrified to mess up something as a manager because I think it's really hard to be a good manager and you obviously uh, want to do it right. But then I, in my company, we just hired a lot of very strong women and I look at them and I ask them and I, they share things with me and it kind of like helps me see, yes, I want to be like her one day. For example, Samantha, she's our <coughs> VP of sales for EMEA. She's like this badass woman who can be really strict with all the territory managers if she has to, but she's also super approachable and will have a chat with me in the kitchen about yoga or about her anxiety or things like that. So um, I think what it comes down to is having strong female role models and them encouraging other women to also take on leadership um, roles because as you said like sometimes we are leaders but then we're like am I really a leader I think we always have to have this tendency to put ourselves down imposter syndrome yeah imposter syndrome. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah it's very common <laughs> yeah. I have it too um, to be fair it's interesting like because this question was asked about leadership and I haven't had people I haven't felt ever that people thought of something because of my gender in terms of leadership and it was very funny because I was talking with a friend and I was like oh uh, people have never said anything to me that was like sexist in any way like it's fine and then he's like well like 10 minutes ago you were telling me how this person said oh you don't look like a programmer or uh, like, <laughs> I'm like, oh, um, actually, you're right. I just shrug it off so well. Like, I've learned to shrug it off. Mm. That's the thing. It's not that it doesn't necessarily exist. And I think I'm quite a strong personality. So I wouldn't, I wouldn't put it on myself and stop myself from. Mm. I would shrug it off. But I understand that for other people, that can be a real issue. Yeah, that's why uh, even this space about showing off that, okay, she can be my next role model, or that is possible, she is a leader, right? People can get more involved, and it, actually you're giving visibility about what you're doing. Yeah, I think role models are very important, and it keeps coming up here, so I think we might as well touch upon that. Uh, so what do you guys think about role models? Have you ever had someone you looked up to and that drove you more or anything like that? Yeah, that may sound cheesy, but my mom. Oh, it's so cheesy, <laughs> it's perfect. <laughs> <laughs> no, my mom, um, she's a very hardworking woman and she's always taught me and my sister, I want you to have an education, I want you to make your own money and be independent. Um, and I think that she's really taught me how to work hard. So I'm really thankful to her because she's taught me a lot. I might get emotional talking about her. Oh. Um, but. Um, also, recently, um, I recently had a trip to South Africa and I started reading more about Nelson Mandela. Um, and I think he's a really inspiring person. He inspires me a lot. That's really cool. It's very hard to top that answer, I have to tell you. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> well, I don't have role models per se, I think. It's, uh, I've never been asked that. And I was searching frantically for, for something. I'm sorry. <laughs> <laughs> so, but uh, the thing is, I do get inspired from people in my daily life. I, I am very uh, observant, so I, I notice when they have like a way of dealing with things that is different than mine, and uh, I can appreciate it and sometimes also incorporate if I see like a, a good way, like a healthy way of dealing with things that other people have shown me. Then this inspires me and can make me change as well. I think it's also related with uh, visibility a lot because some, sometimes you know this kind of thing that says 
Uh, you don't know that it's possible till you see it sometimes. And it happened to me actually one of the first times that I went to a meetup. I was really young, so long ago. It was age. HTML5, I think so, you know, like, <laughs> and, um, and actually I get really inspired with one of, I consider him one of my role models, um, because he was in front of uh, the stage talking about technology and talking about, actually he was traveling around the world, right, uh, teaching about this, and I was like, wow, that's a cool job, I want to do the same thing, right? So after that, um, Actually, I met him. Even we were in the same uh, in the same uh, environment a lot, and they gave me the opportunity to start doing kind of the same thing. But before that, I didn't know that it was a kind of role or like actually it was a real job, right? So, given the possibility to make visible what you're doing, um, I think it's great. You never know who else is it can be inspired by you. Yeah, and. I think that when I say yes to do these kinds of things, I <laughs> <laughs> normally I do it. So hopefully kind of the people in our organization and just other people can see like anybody can do that. That's fine, right? Like <laughs> seeing more people who are kind of like from all different kind of walks of life um, and have lots of different experiences get up and kind of, you know, talk about the things that they've done. I think that's kind of what you know, we need to make sure that we have a lot of those people who are, you know, women um, and from all different communities. So, you know, children kind of are looking up and seeing lots of different kind of kinds of people doing different jobs that, you know, we need people to do and that have lots of opportunities. So for me, that's kind of what's really kind of, you know, important from the role model kind of question at this point. Because, yeah, I was like, my parents, like, that's, that's all I got. <laughs> I got my parents. And then, yes, I also kind of like try to pick up lots of kind of skills and way of dealing with things as I interact with people. I think that is important, actually. A lot of people take heart from seeing other people doing things they are kind of interested in and are not sure, and then they see them doing it, and they're like, oh, you know what? Mm -hmm. Yeah. Mm -hmm. <laughs> I can do that. Yeah. <laughs> OK. Um, so going back to more of a diversity and inclusion um, overall aspect. So we know there have been mistakes because people didn't take diversity and inclusion into account. Let's say, for example, a very old one from the seatbelts who were not really designed for women or children, so it ended up being dangerous. Or like from, an, uh, from a software that recognized faces and let's say for <laughs> specific, it didn't really work out very well. Uh, so why uh, do you think it is important to have diversity and inclusion in your own opinion. <laughs> I'm laughing because I just had this conversation over lunch with um, <laughs> two guys. Um, I think diversity is such a broad topic. It's not, I think in software, it's a lot about diversity of genders, but I think it goes beyond that. It's mm -hmm. diversity of sexual orientations and religions and even backgrounds. Like I. I studied English and Catholic theology, so I come like from a different world, basically. But there are so many skills that I can use in my job right now, like communication skills, project management skills, language skills. Um, so I don't know, like over lunch, we discussed that diversity is important because we need to realize that we're all different. And mm -hmm. different is good, different isn't bad, so yeah. Yes, I completely agree with that. And something that I don't like is, for example, the word minority, because it's like, okay, what is minority? Am I a minority because I'm a woman? Because uh, I'm, I don't speak English, right? So I think um, that diversity, it should be in different areas, not only software, because everybody should embrace their background. It doesn't matter, like sex orientation, gender. And in terms of software, uh, we are all consumers too, right? So if, um, for example, one of the things uh, related with voice technologies, the first voice devices didn't recognize uh, the voice in women, uh, or even worse, even if you are a male and not an English a native speaker, they were not able to recognize it. So at the end, we are all consumers, and why not we can be producers? Why do you think it's hard to have a diverse team? People. <laughs> <laughs> Although, yes. Well, we're spending quite a lot of time right now 
um, investing in improving how inclusive we make our teams. Um, and it, it is really hard because even if you know the team, everybody looks the same. Like obviously, everyone knows that you know there's so much more underneath the surface and people's personalities and their backgrounds that really do make people very unique and different people. Um, and that's really super important. But then how we're actually able to you know work effectively together, um, so people aren't you know hesitating about putting their ideas forward. So people are able to kind of you know actually challenge each other in a kind of a constructive way to come up with the best solution. But like, you know, I think people don't want to hurt each other's feelings. I think people kind of don't know how to negotiate conflict well. I don't think people know how to, like, make people feel included when they are the minority group, as it were. So, like, I think there's a lot of skills and just kind of, like, recognition of, like, you know, how, like, what are the areas that we do need to focus on to kind of improve how we create inclusive environments. Mm -hmm. But yeah, I think like I think it's I think it's really hard actually, <laughs> from from being in teams where there's been a you know kind of a good measure of like what you would kind of say is kind of gender diversity and racial diversity and you know d diversity of kind of background and from being in teams where there's not like actually it's both hard it's hard <laughs> so yeah I, I think I think that's kind of that's what we're really trying to focus on is how we enable the our teams to you know have conflict in a more constructive way to create like environments where people can you know be who they want to be but you know aren't kind of holding themselves back because of you know they feel like they won't be heard or listened to fair enough uh, what do you think the world needs more of to reach gender equity so I'm bringing back gender the reason for that is that it's one that's actually quite visible <laughs> it's easy to measure yes <laughs> Yeah, in whatever um, diversity or, or equality you want to do, is the first step is awareness. I think so, in so many different areas, right? Um, uh, even what is the challenge right now? Why you are trying to go to uh, equal options? What's going on in other places that maybe we are really lucky to be here, we have the, the possibility to uh, be here, but in other places women are not here. So all, all these kind of things, being aware, I think, is the first step about uh, equality. Yeah. yeah, and I think it's just an acknowledgement, acknowledgement as well. It's like, OK, we're, I think many places are saying, we're clearly not getting it right, so we want to improve it. But I think there's lots of other places that aren't saying, we aren't, like, this is a problem for us. So yeah, I think it's kind of like how you just be like, this is, you know, it's, it's, it's a product of, you know, the culture that we exist in to, to a certain extent. So, you know, it's not a, the entire fault of a particular organization, but I think it's how you, it's how you take responsibility for it. Like mm -hmm. all, like a, a, as an organization, I think is, you know, so important to improving the numbers overall. Because it's not just, you know, one company that's going to fix anything, it is cultural. Yeah. So it requires a cultural change. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I think in general it would solve a lot of problems if we were to shift when appropriate to longer term thinking. Because I think short term thinking is what makes you say, oh, OK, there is uh, this person I'm going to hire, which is exactly the same as everybody else. So it's going to work out. <laughs> but on the longer term, uh, more diverse teams yield better results. Uh, I mean, Short-term thinking is also what has created the situation with the environment. So I think long-term thinking in general is an important thing to adopt as a culture and it would solve so many more things than just the gender gap. Yeah. Uh, so on that aspect of uh, diversity and inclusion, how do you find the overall community, not just companies, like the development community and even the Python community? I, I really happy in the moment that we are in terms of community and inclusion. Um, uh, we um, in different communities, also the community that I'm in right now. And basically, I wouldn't be here in London without the community, because the opportunity that I have to start uh, doing this and uh, everything was first with uh, from somebody with the community. So um, communities has a responsibility, even us, to first of all create these spaces, um, offer opportunities, right, and make visible whatever uh, is happening right now in terms of uh, equality. So um, even if you're a community organizer, or even if you are just going through an event, try to reach out somebody that 
maybe it looks different than you, give a chance. I think that's really important. Mm -hmm. Well, the Python community, I find, is quite diverse if one looks at uh, who is using Python, because Python is used, for example, by academic people. And um, I find it interesting to go to conferences because of the, uh, the variety of people you get to meet there. Yeah. What do you think Python's doing differently than, like, the C++ <laughs> community, for example? Well, I mean, sometimes it just has to do with being at the right place at the right time, but I think Python appeared uh, in a with good timing, and it's also easier to get started than C++ because you can just write some Python without compiling. So it has a lower barrier to entry. Mm -hmm. uh, so I think it's easier for uh, more people to get used to that. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. I think we're doing well, but we can do better. <laughs> I mean, if you look at the core Python developers, there are actually some women now, which is really exciting. Five women, okay, that's awesome. <laughs> and I know the core devs are working on it, but I think we can do better. Or if you look at the PSF board, which I'm a part of, there's a lot of white people on the board, so I think we, we can do much better. So, yes, I agree, we're doing well, but we can improve for sure. It's good, it's a work in progress. Yeah. <laughs> Okay, um, I have an do interesting you do question. A question from the audience. Maybe? I'll do in a bit. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> um, <laughs> so, what do you believe, like a young person, would be good to know, or it would be good to hear, if they were um, on the fence or just considering what they would do? You mean in terms of technology? Yes. Absolutely. Sorry. You can do it because I so I was always told or like don't do math, don't do physics, like you're good in languages, you should do that. Because like honestly I was always mediocre in math, but I always really liked it because I liked the problem solving part. English was just something that I could do. It wasn't very challenging for me. I was just good at it. Um, it wasn't until my early twenties that I started learning Python and I realized oh I can actually do it and it's really exciting. So I think every kid should at least try it and then if they're not interested, that's fine. But I think don't self-select. Um. That is a good point. Yeah, I think like uh, something that it happened to me a lot with uh, young people is that when they see a career in tech, usually they think just with developers and or something else. But tech is uh, has so many different profiles, uh, so many different types of uh, walk uh, around this c career path, right? So yeah, tech is, it can be mentoring, it can be a leader, you can work as a, as a consultant. There are so many different types of profiles that you can be around tech, even digital mar marketing, right? So yeah, that's something that I would say. I have one last question before we go to everyone else. So uh, I asked like, what would you say to someone who's thinking of starting their career? Um, but what do you think about someone who has stopped their career for a while and they would like to come back? Or um, <laughs> like, it depends because sometimes it can be like, maybe they're five years outside of the, the workplace. And what do you think they would need to go back or to just stay? <laughs> I know. <laughs> and I don't think like there is an answer mm -hmm. for it scientifically, so <laughs> <laughs> I'm just giving uh, ideas here. I, I can try and answer this one because I was mm -hmm. a manager for many years, so it's, it's very much, and I'm going back more to a hands-on role now. Um, so it's, it's been definitely uh, a big change. I think kind of just embracing that you're going to be, you know, kind of learning a, a crap load like for a long time and you're going to be like, you're going to want to talk and you're like, mm, don't know. <laughs> <laughs> and like that's, that, that can be quite hard kind of yeah. mentally to sort of, to, to kind of like, I have so much to learn. Um, but, you know, it's, it's something that you have to kind of like be excited about. And, you know, if, if, if this is a career that kind of, you know, that, that you know that you're going to enjoy, you enjoy solving problems with software. Um, you know, that's something that we all need to be doing. We all need to be consistently learning. Yes, coming back after a five-year gap, you know, you, you have a lot to kind of, to, to, 
to start learning, but everybody is learning all the time. So I think it's kind of embracing the fact that it's fine, you'll get there, believe in yourself, um, and find people who are also along the same journey, right? Like find people who are kind of in a similar place so you can pump yourself up, because, or can, you can pump each other up. Because I also think that's super important, is to not feel isolated. Yeah. Makes sense to me. Bang. I'm going to see if anyone else has questions to ask. <laughs> yes. <laughs> Uh, by the way, thank you all for sharing this fantastic panel. It's really, really cool to see the intersectionality also of all of your backgrounds. So first of all, thank you. Um, so one of the things that I find when I have this dialogue with people about diversity, equity, inclusion, diversity, equity, belonging, whatever flavor you name it, is people will say, well, you know, it's not that bad, or I've been at places where it's worse. I find that answer <laughs> utterly infuriating. So I'm, I'm kind of curious, when, when you're in those dialogues with people, because it sounds like you all are actively, in some way, putting yourself out there to think through these issues, what are some ways that you respond to that, or what are some ways that you kind of combat that, that um, basically apathy, right? When people don't care, things don't change. I can add my two cents, and then I will stop. Um, <laughs> I think, I think people get a little bit apathetic to this when they don't think it impacts them or like their product, their team. So I think it's trying to have, trying to help them to understand how this does impact every team, and it really does. Um, and a lot of times we get kind of people who will get super invigorated by it once it really impacts them, right? So once they have a daughter or they get married to somebody who's had you know bad experiences right so once it does impact them directly then they become kind of super motivated to be very impactful in this so it's how can we you know kind of frame the discussion around um, how this impacts everyone and it does, like it impacts you too because you're not the same as everybody else and there's been moments in your life when you've been excluded and when you haven't kind of you know done what you could have done because you felt like you know you you wouldn't have been listened to or whatever so i think that's for me like what like it is, a, is an important way to get people to really think more about how it makes a difference to them, themselves. So, yeah, empathy. That's everything. Yeah. Mm. Uh, well, honestly, when somebody has the reaction you describe, it, uh, this person is giving me very useful information. So I observe, basically. And if I want to create an initiative, I would not reach out to them because it's good to, to create initiatives with people that really have your back. And also, if there are still people that think like that, I think that we still need to work on that. Yeah. <laughs> and I think it's the awareness part that's the important one. Yeah. Like, we live in a bubble, fair, fine, yeah, but we still need to kind of look outside and learn more from other people as well. Any other questions? Hi. Well, I'm not sure if that I have a question that's actually kind of targeted to Christine. So you've mentioned that uh, um, that uh, you feel like you kind of live in a bubble here where you felt that you you didn't feel so much of an issue here within Bloomberg. And as a person that has shaped the culture here in London, because, uh, well, Christine um, was the engineer manager in London, and she actually made this even happen because it was not going to happen until you stepped up. <laughs> uh, so thank you, Christine, and everyone should thank you. But as a person that's shaping the culture uh, in this in, in in Bloomberg, London, uh, what would you tell to everyone that's here? That's from many different uh, co uh, companies, so they can take something to their company and make everyone feel as you mm. kind of felt. Mm -hmm. Yeah, and and I guess like my my um, response to kind of like how like gender kind of like being a female framed my experience leadership. Was, was really around the fact that I think we, we as an organization have had loads of issues, <laughs> um, but, <laughs> but you know some of them, had before you were here, we had so many that, like we had so many very, very good learning experiences, and we grew a lot as an organization. Um, yeah, well, well, like it's true, right? Like a, a, anytime something really horrible happens, I think it is just like, whoa, we really need to really learn from this. Um, and I think because when I came over to London, we were just starting out our engineering office. There was like 25 of us. So we had to do loads of hiring, loads of building teams. And we pretty much made you know, every mistake in the book around kind of creating teams, around promoting people, around you know, kind of like just how we delivered our services. It was 
pretty awesome. So because of that, like we had loads of challenges, but I, but I, <laughs> that's why I think probably the sort of the aspect of you know kind of being a female wasn't just like it wasn't something that was part of the the mix at that point. Um, but I think like when when we were trying to really change certain things around the culture here, um, I think really really building sh meaningful relationships with kind of our leaders in New York was incredibly important, right? So it's kind of, it's understanding like who is shaping the culture overall. Um, and it's, you know, really, really caring about what you're doing. I guess that's the other thing. So when we were speaking about, and it wasn't just me, it was you know, kind of a number of us, when we were speaking about the things that we wanted to do differently, like we really cared. We really cared about the products that we were, that we were delivering, the services we were delivering. And we really had, thought, had been thoughtful, because we had made all those mistakes, about <laughs> how to do things in, in a different way, which we felt was going to yield better results. So for us, it was, you know, really have, speaking from a point of caring, um, and you know, making sure that we were heard, and you know, I, th I think I think we're, we're lucky in organization. We have a very like flat structure. You can go and kind of talk. We obviously have hierarchy, but kind of you can go and talk to anybody basically. So it was very open and accessible to kind of talk to different people. And yeah, I think you know, it, 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 that's really kind of what it was for me. It was you know, it was very clear that I that I had firsthand experience that I really cared, and it, and, and I was trying to really focus. To your point on communicating things very straightforwardly, right? And you know, communication is not a soft skill; it's very hard. So I think you know, really doing that in a in a very good way was kind of in instrumental to, I think, getting the teams kind of working in a certain way here. I think that is all that we have a time for. Can we have a warm clap for these amazing <laughs> ladies? <laughs> Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you so much for coming.